Okay, question is on latency. Um, somebody asked me a question about latency and Bluetooth uh, in some of these next generation um, decks. Um, not to be mistaken from something that is like, excuse me, getting something out, excuse me. Everything's falling all over when you try and do stuff with one hand. Um, so, there's a big difference between this type of deck where it is standalone if you need it, but you can use it for software control. Okay, it means you can plug your computer into it and essentially use it as um, a controller in the same sort of way as you could use this. And this is my DDJ FLX. It's a digital only one. It does have Bluetooth capability on it. But that's just for MIDI control. So what MIDI means, it means that you would use it to control like um, a controller or maybe a deck. And I've got a number of different decks and stuff like that, including... I just wanted to take to go right the way down the bottom just uh, playing with Serato with. But I don't need that. So this video is <laughs> going to be another one of my shorts because I did do uh, one yesterday and the day before about Bluetooth and about low latency. So latency means delay between you clicking a button and you hearing it out your ear. The longer the latency, the, less, the, the, the longer it takes for the sound to get to your ear. So effectively, easiest way to think about what latency is is a sonic boom. A sonic boom could be 20 miles away. There, it's instant. Here, it takes probably a few seconds to get to. So that's latency from the event happening to your ears. So in this case, these devices, these next generation devices, this is an Omnis Duo from Alpha Theta. It is different because I've got it skinned from Doto Design. I don't get sponsored by anything like that. This is actually taking music from not only an SD card that's in there, but also my computer that's here. And I'm using it in software mode, but quite often I usually use it like that. So it's just a big library to search. Now I could go purely Wi-Fi and just use it as like a record box kind of export type option, which means I just have a library, a searchable library on there and then I can drag and drop stuff. That's not what this is about. That is effectively you using that as a library and then dragging music onto that. So what I've done here, I did a test between using the Bluetooth that's in this device and the difference between the Bluetooth in this and something like the Denon's, the Denon Prime, the Denon Prime Go, Prime 4, um, I think a lot of the next generation ones are wireless controllers. They've just done a Denon update, 3.4, it allows you to stream from your Bluetooth phone device, Bluetooth player um, to the deck. And then essentially what you can do is, the only thing you can do in fact is just like this, you can play, stop, rewind. That's all you can do on the Denon. That's all you can do, but that might be enough. And then you can then assign it to say one of the decks. Now that might be fine if somebody comes up to you with a music that you're playing because you're doing a, whatever it is you're doing with a, not necessarily a request, but maybe it is a request. Maybe you just said, yeah, yeah, okay, do it. It's somebody's birthday and they're going to put their track on. You could, so you could play audio from your mobile or your device and then you could then assign it to a deck. Okay, so that's Bluetooth one way from the source, which is the mobile device, to that. Uh, and that's fine. The difference between on this duo stroke pioneer is that what will happen is that will appear on this as a track like that it will actually appear as a waveform and you can actually manipulate it and scratch it you can't do that on the denon sorry denon i know you're brilliant and stuff but you can't do it yet no doubt they'll do a software update and you can um Yesterday I proved also as well, I can use this with Serato, I can use this with Serato Lite, I can use this with Recordbox. 
they're the main ones I actually use. So it's fine for me. But also, I don't have to have the software plugged in. I can use the SD card in the back, or I can use this type of device. And this is my SanDisk Extreme one terabyte drive. It's the Extreme Pro because it's the toughened one. I got this because it was super fast speed. Now the difference between something like this, where it's actually engineered to be able to transfer data at high speeds, and something like this, which is a memory stick that is, or an SD card, which is quite old. <clears throat> the difference between the two, there is something called latency. In other words, the ability for me to be able to download and run stuff on here, it's not necessarily latency, actually, it's the transfer speed. So the transfer speed on this is something like 75 megabits per second versus this, which is 1050 megabits per second. So the read write speed on this is a lot quicker. So it's quicker to get me stuff onto this and also quicker to download stuff off of this. So that essentially is the difference between the two. Latency on devices like this that use Bluetooth on the output. And again, that's the difference with this. I can use Bluetooth on the output of this to use it to something like that. That's a Mackie Thump Go speaker. You see the videos. What I'll do is I'll put links to each of those videos as well. And essentially what I've got there is I've got now the ability for me to press play on this and then it will then play. But I hasten to add something, latency. If you are mixing using your ear, not using the headphones, but actually using the speakers that you are playing out to, when you press that, there will be a delay and quite a bit of a delay, about 17 milliseconds. Doesn't sound like it's a lot. It's fine if you're just playing track to track and you're just almost not doing jukebox. But if you're actually mixing not only in your earphones, but you're also feeling the vibe, there will be a delay and therefore it won't sound as natural. So normally what people do, they wire them directly into the speaker because there is no latency, because it's direct. So what I decided to do was look up that. So something like the Denon Prime Go and this on this duo. They've got Bluetooth that you can play out to. In fact, that's interesting because on the Denon, you can only play into it. You can't play out to unless you've got an adapter, unless anyone knows any different. Um, but I think it's only in. You can't do out. This has got two-way Bluetooth, so you can play. Also, you can go in from a device, and you can also play out from this as well to a speaker. But you can't do both at the same time. So... I wanted the mechanism where I could then say, right, okay, I want to do low latency, so what's the option? And what I didn't want to do is, because some of the gigs I'm doing, there isn't a lot of space, and I don't want to run wires. And there's a reason for that, because just people tripping over things and so on and so forth, so it makes it easier. I do have the cables, the XLR cables to plug in, but I'm not using those. So in this case, what I've got here is I've got a transceiver. So transmitter and receiver. And what his one goes in the back of the deck and one goes in the back of the speaker. So essentially what happens is that plugs in the back of the deck. And if I turn it on, it's a little radio. So it's a transmitter. Now the difference between this and Bluetooth is when you play from a device, it has to load all of that data, the audio and so on, into Bluetooth, buffer it, and then play it to the speaker where it then gets unloaded. Now, the problem with that is that's why there's latency in that. So there's no real low latency Bluetooth capability. You know, they've been starting to improve it. The um, Alpha Theta new speaker, what it uses, if you go from this to that, there's no direct connection because it requires you to plug in an adapter into the back of the booth output of this, and then the capabilities built into the speaker. I did that in a video yesterday. If you missed that, watch that video yesterday, because I did a demo as well, and you'll see the difference. So these are brilliant, because what they do is they channel hop and look for the best possible frequency. That one talks to that one. 
And essentially what I've got is I've got two separate channels that I use. And what it will do is it will look for the best clear channel. It's using UHF, ultra high frequency radio. And it has a latency of about something like three milliseconds. So three milliseconds versus zero milliseconds is very negligible. You can't hear three milliseconds. You might be able to just hear the delay, but it's a difference between you. So, you know, pressing k, go, k, go, or go, go. That's the difference between, it's weird, I know. It doesn't sound like a demo in that sense. So low latency is really quite important. If you want to play out the back of this to a set of speakers, use some low latency adapters. I've got these low latency adapters because um, they're UHF. It's near enough instantaneous. It's nearly as quick, if not as quick as cable. I would say, obviously, it's not as quick as cable, obviously, because cable's direct, because the speed of light goes straight from the unit to the speaker. But it's three milliseconds. And that essentially is fast enough for it to work. And I worked it yesterday. I mixed by ear, took the headphones out, mixed by ear, and it was fine. So the difference between latency and um, you know having a lot of latency and so on. So it won't be a second. Let me just uh, let me just finish this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just finish this video, and then I'm going to talk to uh, the boss over there as well. So. That's the difference between latency. I hope that makes sense. Thank you.